Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Let me just see if I can turn up the brightness a bit. Oh, it's another lovely day in paradise. And I feel the video coming on. Only because a few things have happened, you know. Dental things, funnily enough. I had um, an email from uh, my one of my patients this morning and uh, it was a very nice email on the face of it you know it was sort of very uh, friendly dear Mr Watson is headed leaving you know so I knew I knew pretty much what it was about dear Mr Watson uh, I am pleased to say I've finally come to the top of my previous dentist waiting list and therefore I will uh, not you know you can cancel my appointments etc etc um, however, I would just like to let you know that uh, oh God, I was at a nasty crash. I would just like to let you know that um, you know uh, I've really appreciated your service and everything, and I've got absolutely no complaints, and will not hesitate to use you again in the future should my circumstances change. So. There's two ways of sort of looking at that. There's, there's, a, there's a sort of, um, you know, th this is a patient who's obviously short of money, would like to go private, and appreciates the sort of the what you get as a private patient in terms of amount of time and quality of materials, quality of laboratory work and stuff like that. But just can't because they don't have the cash, and therefore they have no choice but to to. Uh, just apply to go on national assistance, you know. Uh, or um, the other way of looking at it is there is the patient who's like, uh, you know, thanks for being there when I had no choice, but uh, now I've got a choice, and so I'm choosing to go somewhere else. <laughs> so you can read it either way. I mean, I think it's. Either way, I think it's designed to be a perfectly pleasant letter and not everybody does write you such a nice letter and say that they appreciate the service that they've had and everything and, and apologise for leaving. I can't help thinking there's a little bit of, you know, you know, I might need to go back there so I want to leave but I want to keep them sweet, you know, because, I mean, this woman's been chucked out of this surgery once already, presumably, for not going in for her checkups or whatever, you know, been deregistered, whatever. And so she may well end up being deregistered again, or, or more likely, uh, you know, she'll just find that what they offer her is not what they should be offering her, you know. So uh, I think she may come back just because she finds that the, the NHS service is not what it should be, you know. And I mean that genuinely, I mean, you know, it should be comprehensive service, but we're getting so many patients in, uh, with, you know, every patient who comes to us has got a story, which of course, I mean, they're a self-selecting group, they're biased because they've, they've left, but they sort of start off by saying, you know, I'm come, I've come in for emergency treatment because my dentist is on holiday and he, he hasn't made, made any arrangements for emergencies while he's away. I just rang up the surgery and I was told that there's nobody there this week, nobody there, you know, and, um, but then when you have a chat with them and say, look, you know, well, yeah, of course we can do this, then um, then they say, well, good, you know, and I'd like to register here because I haven't been happy for a while and, I, and in fact I am looking for a new dentist, you know. They don't come and say, I am looking for a new dentist. They just say, they ask you what, you know, what you can do and then they say, well, yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll change and I'll come here, which is, you know, fair enough. That's what old, uh, what's his name, the head of which? who ended up being the uh, government's darling and did the uh, invented the three treatment bands. He'd love that, that's my free market, free market competition. But one, one example was a woman who came in, she had a, a part upper denture, which replaced her upper left three, I think, and uh, upper right uh, four, five, and six. And um, her crown had fallen out of the front. 
So before we even, I mean, I, you know, you could see the ground was falling out. So I took a straight down the X-ray, I took an X-ray of it. Sure enough, the root's fractured. It's a short uh, conical post. I'd fractured the root. And so I told it it was hopeless and it was going to have to come out. And um, But I said that they've made that denture over an upper right four uh, root. And when we x-rayed that, although it had uh, an abscess on it, so they made the denture over the top of, a, of an abscess root, which had been they'd cut down to gum level, you know, thinking that they were preserving the bone by keeping the abscess root. <laughs> oh, God. So I said, so if you stick a crown on that, and I said, and if I stick a bridge across the front to replace, this is all conditional on sorting her gums out, which then she got NHS gum, which is the purple, Blue, the purple blue gum, you know, that's uh, never been brushed. I said, provided we can sort out your gum problems, then we can stick you in a bridge and a crown and you can throw your denture away. And, and this poor woman uh, burst into tears. She said, it's the first time anyone's really listened to her, you know. She said, I've got a spot on my gum on the bottom right hand side as well. So we looked at that and it turns out she's got a non-vital low right four which has got a long-standing granulomatous sinus, gum boil on it. And uh, I said to her, what's the story behind that? And she said, well, every time I go in, I mention, I mention it. And they all would say, uh, yeah, don't worry about it, you know. So it's so fine as it is, sort of thing. So I said, oh, well, if you like, we can root treat that and then we'll get rid of the infection in that tooth as well. I mean, it's, I think it's, we're getting more and more of this. It certainly appeals. It appears to me that we're getting more and more of this. Um, and uh, I think it may be because the, I mean, there, there, there have been a couple of big, high-profile closures of NHS practices in our area, and I think that may be why. There's a lot of pressure. You know, you, the old phone started ringing saying, "I, I'm looking for a dentist. I'm looking for a dentist," and so. Uh, we we say to you, you know, we'll do. Can you can you see me? You know, yeah, I can see you. Yeah, how about Wednesday? Wednesday, really? Not September? No. Uh, yeah, but we are a private practice. So I've got to tell you, you know, are you looking for a private practice? Well, no. The answer is no. They never. Nobody's ever looking for a private practice. So if they say, oh no, they they you have to judge by that response. Would they say, well, how much is it? Or you know. Uh, no, it doesn't matter. You know, I've, I'm past, I'm past looking for an NHS one sort of thing. Then we tell them that we do a flat rate checkup and uh, uh, including uh, a full uh, workup of what their problems are, the costings, including X-rays for 58 pound flat rate, and that's it. You know, then we take away their fear of cost because they bring, they know as long as they bring 58 quid, then they're okay. The um, <laughs> the difference though between private and NHS I think is, I mean I used to summarise it to the patients as having more time and uh, using being able to use the best quality materials and the best quality laboratories uh, but um, I think the NHS has gone downhill since then I think the gap's widened up not because they are no they're, they're no not, that any, not any more that they are just merely not using the best materials and not using the best labs. It's that they are they are genuinely doing things, weird things. Everything's a weird thing, you know. Telling people that a gum boil is something that's not to be worried about, you know. Making someone who could have a bridge a partial denture. All, all this 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 is a this is the fourth difference now between NHS and private. It's these weird treatment planning. Weird. That's all it is. It's just weird treatment planning that fits the system. You know, the, the, the patients being made to fit the system, the, the Cockroft system. One size fits all. You know, any all the fillings you need for the price of one. And uh, I don't. There's not enough. There's no quality control on the NHS to uh, to, to sort this out. You know, the regional dental officers are all gone. Anyway, 
we had a parcel delivered uh, to the wrong surgery. Went up the road to Sainsbury's. And my, my, the nearest dentist to me, I think, is Sainsbury's. I, I think. I say I think because I don't care. <laughs> I could have a, I could have a dentist in another unit in the same building as me, and I wouldn't care because we, we can out compete anybody. So, in fact, there was a funny story. I was in. Uh, when I used to work in Whitstable, um, we were in a little shop unit in Tankton and uh, I went to a local dental committee meeting and uh, you know, they, the same old question, you know, what's it like on the NHS round here? What, is there much private, is there much NHS round where you are? And I said, well, I'm, I'm private. I said, but there's no, there's absolutely no NHS really round where I am. And this dentist who's one of these <laughs> part of the problem type dentist who's a, you know, got a few NHS practices and with a view to the main chance, you know, with a view to sticking chewing gum in the teeth if he can, if he thinks he can get away without getting inspected. And <laughs> he says, oh, okay, so I ought to seriously think about coming and setting up a practice next door to you then and offering NHS. And it was like half tongue, it was half tongue in cheek, you know, half tongue in cheek. And then, and I said to him, Really, would you? I mean, would you really? I mean, I'd be, I would so much appreciate it if you would do that. Could you come and sit up next to me? Right next to me. I said, I, w I would need you to be right next to me because I get so many patients in every day saying, I want an NHS dentist, I want an NHS dentist. And I said, we don't, we don't know what to do with these patients. He said, they've got no money. They're not, they don't care about the quality of the work or anything. They just want to, you know, they pay their national insurance, therefore they want their NHS dentistry. These people are entitled. And so I, this is before the word entitled had been used, was used in this context. But I said to him, do you know what, if I had an NHS practice right next to me, I would be able to say to every one of them, no problem, just nip next door, nip next door, and then the bloke next door will do crap work on you for next to nothing. And then everyone will be happy. I said, I'll be doing the private, I'll be having the private patients and you can have all the NHS ones right next door to me. Oh, did he not like that? Did he not? In one, in one conversation, I had completely disrespected his entire clinical practice and taken the piss out of him at the same time. <laughs> and I don't think he ever again thought of setting up anywhere near me. Oh, anyway, we went to, went to the local practice, Sainsbury's, and uh, they'd had one of my FedEx parcels have been from Dental Director had been delivered there by mistake. FedEx had fucked up, so so I had to unfuck it all and go and get it. So I walked in and the uh, and this this uh, girl who was on the phone to a friend of hers, uh, <laughs> just in case the principal's watching it and wonders why the phone bills are so high. Okay, <laughs> so. She's like, after a minute, she, she, saw, she didn't say, oh, look, I'm sorry, I've got to go now, someone's walked in, you know, she was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> so, I stood there for a bit, and then she, she hung up, and then, instead of talking to me, she looked at the a book, she looked down at her book for a bit, you know, she looked, looked at the computer for about 10 seconds, she said, you don't have an appointment, do you? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> so, so then her little brain exploded and she thought, oh, okay, right, I'll just start again from the beginning. So she said, right, how can I help you? And I said, I've come to pick up a parcel. Oh yeah, it's over there. So of course, when you go in, you have a good old sneaky look round, don't you? And I think there, if it's a new patient, you pay 40 pounds. And if you're, if it's a recall, you pay 35. So, and I don't know, it didn't say anything. I don't know, they might charge extra, extra for x-rays. I don't know, but, um, I thought, oh, that's cheap because we charge 58, although ours in, is inclusive. I don't know if theirs is inclusive, but uh, and also we tend to charge less for the first appointment. You know I mean, it's sort of we're really odd in a way. I, I think more more clever in that we don't discount the regular treatment, we, but we do discount like the first visit, especially if someone says oh, they're interested in an implant or. Uh, but if it's just a routine checkup, then we'll just charge them 58 quid. And certainly, if they if we think they're a bit dodgy, then we'll charge them 58 pound up front because because of this spate of closures locally, we've had a, a few patients ring up, and they typically 
typically take the form of someone with a, quite a strong foreign accent, usually a female, ringing up on behalf of her partner to say that um, he's got mad raging toothache and uh, can, he, can he get in and have some emergency treatment. And then they then don't turn up. And the reason they then don't turn up is either the toothache's gone away or he's decided that he doesn't like the dentist more than he doesn't like the toothache or uh, they've carried on ringing around another 50 practices and they've got in uh, you know and they've, they've got in somewhere else and and not been asked to cancel out you know not had the courtesy to cancel our, our appointment so we take uh, 58 quid up front you know if they're if they're um, if we think they're just making appointments speculatively you know, a lot of people do ring around you know and even if they ring the NHS helpline they, they, they're typically on the phone for an hour that's how long it takes to wait and talk to someone and, and get some advice. Never much less than an hour, 40 minutes to an hour. So, but I'm not gonna put my, I mean, you know, your immediate, you know, your immediate reaction is to think I'm gonna get into a price war here. I'm going to, um, uh, I'm gonna cut my check up to 39 pounds to undercut them, you know? So that if anyone rings up and makes a decision, they're going to say, well, uh, you know, I can go to Sainsbury for 40 quid or I can go to Wattie for uh, 39. So let's go, let, we'll go with the 39, that save a pound. But people don't think like that. I mean, there's a difference between us and Sainsbury's. We are, we're, we're a private practice and we're quite happy to say that over the phone. You know, we are, we are, and I've realised recently that we're a private, private practice. We're not, we're not just a private practice, we're a private, private practice. And by that, what I mean is we're a proper private practice <laughs> in that we're private. We're not, in the old days, they used to have a word for it, independent. You know, and independent just meant not, currently not on the National Health Service, you know, but would like to be if we could. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're doing an NHS service, but charging a bit more. But don't worry, not as much as those private dentists. So, so, and that's where Sainsbury's is at the moment. You know, it's all, it's very sort of Sainsbury's fied, and I don't know what you're supposed to do. I mean, I mean, you can't go to Sainsbury's and buy a cart full of ice cream and then leave it defrosting while you have your crown done. So, and and uh, it's not exactly a brilliant location, really. I would say to, for a dentist. I mean, it might be, I don't know. I mean, certainly good for footfall. I mean, everybody knows there's a dentist there. So I suppose that's the main point from the dentist point of view. They advertise that they've got den eight dentists there or something, but either they've only ever got one dentist working when I'm in there. So, uh, you know, when you put, put your head through the door, so. And they've got a, this sort of 40 pound, 35 pound, I think it's just a utilitarian price list. You know, it's just a sort of, it's designed to cater to, to the Sainsbury shopper who, I don't know what the average weekly shop is at Sainsbury's, but I mean it's, you know, it's 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 in, it's along the lines of what people probably spend in Sainsbury's. You know, it's perhaps people spend about hundred pound a week in Sainsbury's, and so a forty pounds, a forty pounds checkup is within that. You know, they have to keep it within that range, and then they have to work these horrendous hours because Sainsbury's doesn't want. Uh, their customers to go to Sainsbury's and find that uh, Sainsbury's is open but all the shops around are shut because they know that it, that that will hit their business you know people won't go during the hours that 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 90 percent of all the associated shops are shut so Sainsbury's insists that all these associated shops stay open um, even though it may not be profitable or to staff the uh, 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 you know, to work during those hours. I suppose they just keep a receptionist in there or something. Anyway, it was my old school reunion, dental school reunion, a couple of weeks ago. It was a bit, um, well, I mean, the first part was nice. We sort of hired a, we hired a, an area in reception and watched the England-Sweden match, uh, which we won, so that was good. All made all the better by the fact that the bar across the road was uh, full of Swedish fans wearing Swedish kit. And uh, but um, and um, we had a nice chat and uh, some drinks and that. And then uh, we went to this restaurant in the evening, and um, which was just, just a nightmare in Charlotte Street. And 
very busy, very noisy, it was very hot, air conditioning had broken down, we, there, there were about 20 of us around a long thin table and so uh, you could just about talk to the two people either side of you and, and the one across, uh, but absolutely no way of talking to the guys who joined later down the other end of the table. So uh, that was all a bit of a failure really, so um, I think, uh, but, but I've got to say for the first time, they're all 60 now, and for the first time they didn't behave like a bunch of dicks. Because every other time I have been out to dinner with these guys, and we go out every two, five, ten years, whatever, they revert to their student personas, and as as students they were not really a very serious lot. I mean, I'm not saying I was I was serious, but they never they never grew up. Do you know, what I mean? you know, even when they were 35, 40, 45, 50, they were still you, you were still like, oh my god, I'm going to be sitting next to them, blah 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 blah, and you know. But the the maddest, wackiest one of them was sitting next to me at the dinner, and I've got to say, all he did was go on about uh, the fact that he's he's into fitness and swimming in particular, and reservoir swimming and stuff like that. And no, oh, that was great. I was, so, I thought, my God, at last this bloke has settled down and decided to act like normal. You know, he's got himself a nice little hobby. They don't talk about the families much, but they just talk about, you know, what they what they're doing now, you know, and just a bit about just about a bit about themselves personally, and uh, it was nice for that, you know. I mean, it's taken them it's taken them until the age of sixty to sort of be able to do that, but kudos to them, you know, they they finally got there. So I think we might try and organise a few more. Uh, reunions because uh, now that they're now that they've settled down a bit you know anyway I've got bags more news but I'll uh, I can't I won't work now so it's gonna have to wait so I uh, I'll talk to you next time and don't forget if you're gonna be private be private private and not NHS private. That's not what people want. Ooh. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye.